Welcome, everybody. It's your boy, Tex. Welcome to another episode of the City Podcast. Stay in truth to yourself, where we delve into the issues that matter. We have guests on here that come and share about their narrative. So, as I said before, I'm your host, Tex Wambui. And today we have a special guest with us. We have a similar experience where we shared through uh, Summer House, where we played a role in advocating and advancing um, how we can increase young black men in the classroom um, as educators. But that's a topic we might touch upon today. But without further ado, man, um, I'm going to let y'all get introduced to Alan Graham himself. So, Alan, let them know who you are real quick, man. Okay, for sure. Also, Summer House definitely was a phenomenal experience, really uh, insightful, and the connections I made there are definitely worthwhile. But to introduce myself, my name is Alan Graham III. I'm a Ryerson senior, or I am a senior here at Cheney University of Pennsylvania. I'm a double major in computer science and business administration with a certificate in graphic, in graphic design. So I'm very like, um, I'm very big on like expanding my skill set, you know, put my best foot forward. I'm very engaged in student leadership here at my respective campus. So I've done a lot of things such as like, you know, founding a club organization to serve in a part, serving in leadership roles and being a part of the e-board for many different other organizations as well. So whether it be like committees or, you know, essentially doing things like work study, I pretty much just have my foot in everything. So like this current semester, I'm, I'm currently executive vice president of SGA, or Student Government Association, and I'm also MPHC president, among some other things as well. But as overall, I'm a hard worker. I just like to be a community-oriented person, and I'm also a member of a fraternity, which is like with a Phi Data Fraternity Incorporated. And you know, I'm very happy, uh, very true to myself, and I love what I do. Awesome. Well, I appreciate you for sharing that awesome intro and you know talking your shit letting them know what you're doing that's what's supposed to do um and i really appreciate you you know for um engaging yourself within your community and uh shout out to you for um being part of uh being an iota and uh doing all that stuff that you're doing within your school man um so you know you're on the city podcast this is a stay true to yourself podcast and you already mentioned you like to stay true to yourself you know so um I want you to kind of just share, um, how do you go along with that? How do you find that niche to always be yourself in any moments you're in, man? Uh, So my biggest motivator for staying true to myself is just knowing who I am as a person and just realizing like how, how unique I am. And in general, sometimes it is difficult to like do your own thing or not follow the crowd. But when you are unique, you may tend to feel along it you may tend to feel alone at some point in time because it's just like, oh, not too many people are like me, things like that. But at the end of the day, it's like, you know, if you follow the crowd, um, you follow their destination. And if it's like on a, my own destination, my own journey, it's like, I got to do what I got to do for myself. That's indeed. That's indeed. Appreciate you for sharing that because um, I always, th- you know, I've always thought about that, you know, the whole aspect of, you uh, you know, just finding your inspiration, the thing that makes you who you are to value kind of you know, your path because everybody has their own different journey. Um, and sometimes it just requires you just not following the crowd and just following yourself and being your own leader. And I, I can definitely say that's, you know, definitely something that has inspired me in my uh, journey for my podcast, you know. Um, I'm not going to name it anything else. I've heard people tell me, oh, you should name it this, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, nah, I'm going to just name it the way it actually it's, it's meant for. Um so how do your like personal values like align with the kind of the work you do? So my personal values are to of course like come into any environment and leave a positive impact on it. And then to also just pretty much put my best foot forward, like trying to socialize, making sure that I'm actually knowing where I'm at, like knowing the people. Like, I feel as though it's like a disservice to myself if I go somewhere and I don't really interact, I really get a gist of what's going on with people that's there. So whether it be like a conference, like a large social gathering, even from like playing something like a game or something like that, I feel like, you know, this is best to introduce myself to everybody and say, hey, I'm just like a very like hospitable person. So 
that's kind of what it all boils down to. I'd be the best, like, you know, servant possible to the people or to the establishment, really. Oh, wow. Okay. Oh, I really appreciate you for sharing that because I can definitely resonate with that because, um, you know, that allows you to kind of foster those meaningful conversations um, and, you you know, it shows you dedication to kind of staying true to yourself. Uh, so I definitely uh, see what you mean by that. Um, so now in terms of like, you know, that journey and how you kind of come to that understanding, um, are you eating right now, by the way? No, I'm not eating right now. I was like, <laughs> so what you eating? <laughs> um, but what is that accomplishment so far in your life, or maybe that obstacle, that, that adversity that has kind of shaped you who you are? And why would you say that? You said what type of adversity has shaped who I am? Yeah, what kind of adversity, or it can even be an accomplishment that has shaped you in kind of, you know, um, your personal growth and your mindset. Uh, so for adversity, I guess you could say like, Growing up, I never really had like a consistent group of friends or like I just never really got along with that many people. Like I always kind of be like the odd one out. It wouldn't even really be for like negative reasons or I wouldn't be like because I'm doing something negative. But just I just essentially got bullied. That's really to put it that as simple as that. I got bullied growing up, um, you know, I made fun of things like that. So, of course, you know, you get bullied either make yourself or you break yourself so to me i just kind of just stay true to myself so that's pretty much the beginning of it all it just being like okay i got me and that's it at the end of the day so that type of a triumph and adversity is definitely like the first part of everything of course there's other like traumas and, like other like you know big things i got in past in this life but you know it all it all comes from just you know being able to like reflect and, and just stay within myself and then, like, opportunities that made who I am. Um, I would definitely say, like, in high school, I did, like, a couple of programs. So it was, like, PEX, which was with the Franklin Institute, and, like, a couple of other programs sponsored by DHS, which is the Department of Human Services. There was, like, this, um, or there's these two organizations. One was called Boys Track, and the other one was called PYLC, which is Philadelphia Youth Leadership Council. And both of them pretty much did what they could, to, like, you know, uh, give us like the right mentorship and guidance regarding like of course just being like a strong exemplary example like a young black man in America and of course Philadelphia and also be like you know a youth leader and things like that so that's pretty much where the groundwork of my skills and what I built upon that's pretty much came from and I've been a part of those programs since like my eighth grade summer or something like that so you know the roots go deep Wow, okay. Um, you know, I've actually never really asked that question like that um, before on, this, on the, ca- the podcast. So I usually ask about people's biggest accomplishment, but it seems like, you know, one your adversity has been your biggest accomplishment in allowing you to, you know, f- fine tune um, yourself and kind of understanding more of uh, the path that you want to lead by. It sounds like you want to be an example to people, um, but you believe that being an example for yourself. And I really, really want to commend you on that and say, um, you don't find many people like that, man. And especially people that look like us. So I really appreciate you for saying that. Um, and is there like any lessons or like insights that you have gained from these experiences that you feel can be uh, reflected to not just, you know, your individual ind- individual self, but to the larger sense of our community? Like, just life lessons that I kind of learned my, on my own, essentially. Yeah, that you feel like people can actually learn from and kind of apply it to their own life. Yeah, I would definitely say, like, you know, um, at the end of the day, if you're a genuine person and genuine, and genuine people come across, like, your path, you know, just because maybe a bit of conflict and interest, just because you got, like, you know, that general, like, gear motor towards doing the right things the right things will come to you so that's one of the main things for me it's just like you know as long as i keep on keeping up the good work good things are going to come and i like as long as i stay true do what i gotta do i'll be the winner at the end of the day um aside from that of course like you know 
we all like you know as people growing up had like the fear of missing out so it's like sometimes it's like oh yeah i should be studying but it's like oh yeah there's this party going on sometimes it's just like you really should just tell yourself like ain't really nothing a party is a party um really the same thing happens at every party so it's just gonna be like different people They're, like you know those mean highlights or like stories to hear are just gonna pop out or just come around yeah all right that's uh that's that's really i'm really appreciate you say that because i was actually just having a conversation recently with somebody about that um they were asking me um hey man let's go to the club and i was like ah oh, man i can just create the club in my own you know in my own house and just sit there um and do what i do in a club at home you know it's much more safe much more comfortable i have a peace of mind i don't have to worry about spending money i don't have to worry about you know doing other things i can just you know be in my own uh space so i, I really appreciate you for sharing that because that, that when i was having that conversation with them i was like oh man you know I, i'm kind of getting that essence of my of my own peace and my own growth. Um, so I kind of want to ask you, do you kind of understand your the essence of your own your own existence, like your own peace and your own journey right now? Or are you still trying yeah. to figure it out? Yeah, like pretty much, I mean, I'm, I'm honestly still trying to figure it out. But I definitely do say like having time for yourself is crucial. Cause I feel like you're really not going to know who you are until you really spend time with yourself. Because, I mean, like, one of, these statistics, one of these statistics I came across a while ago was that apparently only 30% to half of the world has an inner monologue. So it's like, you know, not too many people oh, actually, yeah. like, talk to themselves and things like that. So it's just, yeah, like, that's for me. I, <laughs> but for me, like, there's a lot to me when it comes to, like, mastery of the self. So it's just like, you know how they have like that jack of all trades, master of none quote, and like, you know, it actually finishes as a jack of all trades, master of none, but sometimes better than a master of one. So it's just stuff like that. So I know like, I'm essentially not going to reach my peak in in high school. I'm not going to reach it in college, but I might going to reach it like, you know, sometime later down the road might be in my late 20s mid 20s might even be 30 or something but yeah that's yeah. pretty what the world was leads to yeah you know i was uh i appreciate you for saying that because sometimes when i think about it it's like i think about the milky way galaxy and how things are set up <laughs> you know everything is revolving around the sun but it's all still going at its own pace um it all has its own different kind of approach to it so that's crazy that you say that. Um, and so in kind of transitioning, transitioning now to um, you in terms of the work that you've done, uh, is there any, you have any details about any projects you've done, any content you would like to share out there um, that you are working on or have worked on and you want people to kind of check it out? Uh so regarding like, I'm currently like in the process of just trying to get the funds to finance um, these two businesses that I'm working on. It's technically three, but I'm like I'm a very like business savvy or like business minded person. So, you know, one of the main goals I set for myself like for this academic year was to see and try and put my best foot forward to try and become a millionaire by the end of it. So I'm currently like. Um, I'm looking at some manufacturers for like, you know, a basketball supplier and this other uh, company. I'm going to pretty much like, how do I put this? I don't know. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start like activating my analytical mind so I can start like seeing the points right away instead of like <laughs> wandering around uh, when, when chatting. But essentially, I kind of had like a couple businesses in mind. So I wanted to like create this business called, um, or basketball supply company called Hulk Home, Hulk Home Rucker Basketball. And it's pretty much like to honor um, the legacy of Hulk Home Rucker, who was the person that created Rucker Park, like in the Mecca basketball. You know, he pretty much did it to like, he pretty much took his own money and tried to do what he could to like help inner, inner city kids pursue education, do basketball. And as you also know, the Mecca or Rucker Park contributed a lot to the culture of basketball itself. You know, it's like something that's really prevalent 
within our communities, African Americans, and it's also my favorite sport by coincidence or unironically. So, in general, it's just something I just want to like be able to make a trip uh, contributions to. So I just been like creating some mock-ups. Um, I've been looking at some manufacturers, trying like you know see if they can ship some things over. And then once I got that set up, I uh, fill out the paperwork for it. Um, create like an e-commerce site for it and then start selling and advertising it and that's honestly more than likely what I project to be my big ticket regarding like becoming a millionaire before the end of my senior year so it's also mentioned I'm going to graduate to fifth year since I have a double major but that's just the main big ticket and then the club I found on campus is called the Cheney Counter Culture Club and in short summary it's pretty much a club that's geared towards the cultural advancement and diversity of the campus culture itself. So I'm pretty much uh, trying to get that paperwork put out for it. I'm going to split it off and have one be like a clothing company, which is an LLC, and I don't want to be like a nonprofit, which is, you know, get, get into like give students scholarships and all the other stuff for those that serve on the e-board and things like that. Because it's essentially like, you know, changing on the incline. There's a bunch of other like aspects of like, you know, um, black entertainment that we can expand upon on campus. So that's pretty much what the club is for. So like whenever like the school wants to have people come up and like speak, you're not sure who to bring, who to like introduce them to, or they're gonna give us like a trip, or we're going on, like skiing or like uh, rowboating things like that. It all comes from my club. So ironically, like my business savviness pretty much gave me what I needed to. You know, kind of create like some decisions or kind of like create plans for organizations that are actually like sought out. So, like, those are the main two things people should be able to look out for. Of course, once I have the official paperwork and everything else set up for it, I'll be posting more about it. But that's just overall what it is and like what my uh, general passions are. It's just the main motor, too. Like, I'm a very passionate person. Um, a fun fact, too, is that I was gonna try try out and like try to make the basketball team because I know it's like one of my main dreams. I never actually played on a basketball team before. I'm good at basketball, but I never actually played and like, you know, played a couple of games throughout the, an entire season. So I might do that this this uh, year. Wow, nice, man. Uh, well, first, I want to say anybody out there listening to this and would like to provide funding to my guy, please do that. Reach out to him on LinkedIn. You got, yo, when, when y'all hear this episode, please reach out to him um, and uh, support him in any way you can. Um, and to all the potential sponsors out there, please support him in any potential way. Um, also, uh, what position do you like to play in basketball? Because I can hoop, man. I ain't gonna lie. I'm actually, I might be going hooping after this. Um, but what, what, which, are you a shooter? You play in the post? Are you, you passer? What, what kind of hooper are you? I mean, me personally, I like I like playing the point guard position. I feel like it's more active and it's kind of like, I just like throwing out plays out there and just kind of like creating a flow of the, of the team itself regarding like scoring. But I'm either, I tend to get put towards the three and the four whenever I do play organized ball. So I mean, it's either or. I'm not, I'm not really like a, a score scorer, but I mean, I can get to a bucket if I have to. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I might have to when I come out there to to Philly. I might have to. We might have to catch a basketball game, man. Because uh, uh, I, I I can hoop. You know, I can I can do everything on the court. I might not be the best dribbler, but don't let me get hot. Once I get hot, man, it's over. It's over. I'm uh, yeah. One of the best things I'm I'm good at is uh defense. Like defensive effort wise, I'm like. I don't know. It's just something about me and just trying to take the ball from somebody. It's just so fun. No, nah, yeah, I agree with that, man. I, I love playing defense. That's actually my favorite um, thing to do in any type of sport, actually. I used to play soccer, which I still do, but I, if I, in soccer, I'm the top person. I, once I get the ball, I want to control it. Um, like I just like kind of the a little aggression, too, with defense, you know? So <laughs> that's the best thing about uh, playing defense in sports. Um so I'm, I'm really glad you shared, you know, the things that you're working on and, you know, how you're going to get there. Um, so how would you kind of describe yourself in three words then? 
Uh, I would definitely say ambitious. It's definitely one of them. Um, imaginative or, you know, a visionary and authentic. Ambitious, imaginary or visionary and authentic. Wow. Those definitely go hand in hand. Um, and can you elaborate on how those three words kind of represent the different aspects of your personality or, you know, your character and how they allow you to kind of stay true to yourself? So starting with ambition, like, I've always had, like, a lot of ideas as a kid. So, like, I have, like, journals upon journals of, like, you know, sketches, whether it just be art or actual, like, projects and, like, businesses. And then, like, over time, um, you know, as you grow up, you kind of, your sense or, like, scope of the world starts to mature. So then I started, like, making some of those businesses since then, like, writing out how they can actually be applied to the real world and, like, things like that. And it's also just because, like, I have a really high motor. And it's like, you know, I've definitely done, like, 20-plus leadership positions on campus since I've been here. So it's like, I don't know, I'm just, I'm just a really passionate person. But it's like, my passion just goes towards, like, you know, doing what I can to actually contribute and make an impact in the real world. Like, I'm just from the, if I there's something I see, I want it, I'm going to try and get it. Uh, that's the mentality. I like that. That's cool, man. What's up? Um, so, you know, as we come here to an end, man, I really appreciate the fact that we were just talking about that um, kind of things that kind of shape who you are in terms of how you describe yourself, you know, because the best way I feel like for uh, somebody recently told me this, you know, you sometimes you just got to sound, you got to sell yourself in a sexy way, you know, just kind of make yourself feel like you're the sexiest person alive no matter what, you know? Um, And that's definitely what I can see, you know, as you say, as a visionary, you know, you gotta be able to kind of have that vision for yourself. And I'm, I will be honest, I've um, I've met some people who never have that image for themselves. And I'm glad you shared that. And I hope if they do get the chance to listen to this episode, um, they can get something out of it and understand that you got to be sexy with yourself, man. Sell yourself in a sexy way. Your narrative is yours. You're the only person that can control your narrative. So I really appreciate you for saying yeah, most that. Definitely. I mean, also, I didn't get to um, describe the, the other two adjectives, adjectives for myself. So I, so I, I, I saw you didn't give me the chance to describe, like, why I imagine to and, like, often. Oh, yeah. Like, no, nah, go I'm, ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> I just want to make sure you, you know, you get new questions answered. But yeah, like it's so pretty much like, you know, make it short, simple, like imaginative. I'm a very creative and like optimistic person. So like a lot of times I just can kind of like create solutions like on a whim. Like to me, if you give me a problem, I can likely figure out like a solution to it, a well thought out solution to it, like a, in a span of minutes. So it just, it's kind of like a talent. I kind of more so see it as like a skill, but it's just like more so just like what imagine where like the imagination comes from like imaginative like you know I can really put some things together very clever and authenticity like for me um like it's just principles and like everything else I just don't see a reason to really be like you know a bad person or a negative antsy like I never really feel like I reason to be mean towards people so I'm always like you know nice cool look out like I look out for the folks because I can so you know, for the most part, I can kind of just say, me, I'm just in green, or that's just like, you know, up in it. But I really just do what, do what's the right thing to do. I don't, I prefer to do that. Keep the thing conscious too. Wow, really appreciate you for saying that, man. Um, so if you was to have like a quote for yourself, what would that quote be? Ah, uh, so there was this one quote I seen um, there's like a couple. The main ones I kind of think about is if there was a will, there's a way. But one of the main ones that's kind of been sticking with me was that it says like you know some people die by the age of 25 but aren't buried until the age of 75. But then it's like sometimes I kind of question like have I as a person even been born yet? Because it's just like I just. There's so many things for me to learn and figure out about not only just myself, but about the world. It's just like being so impactful itself. 
it's saying that like you know some people just peak or they just kind of reach like an end point at 25 and at that point they're just living life until they like they actually physically die or whatnot at the age of 75 so i just think like you know like have i even been born yet because it's just like i'm definitely like still kicking gear full motor and i don't see myself stopping at any point at all so that'll pretty much be it some people die at the age of 25 and are buried until they're 75 but my question for myself is have i even been born yet okay um so i don't know i would essentially leave it at that i mean it's just like for real for real what you wish for in this world will come to you it's just gonna come to you in a way that you least expect it mm, okay wow really i really like how you said that um wow that's nice that's nice that's nice that's nice that's nice wow okay um <clears throat> so i don't know if you have any questions for me man anything you would like to ask on my end um let me know right now before we you know come to an end to our nice episode here um and i'm hoping the people out there have learned something and taken something from this anything you would like to ask me man uh, i mean you told you spoke to me about like your um your accomplishments and education so i guess my questions to you would be like you know, if someone's currently pursuing a master's, what advice can you give me if someone's an undergrad and, like, you know, do to graduate? Um, hmm. I say don't let anybody be the reason why you fail. Be the, you be the reason of why you fail. And I'm going to use this. Are you ever watched that movie, Cool Runnings? Cool Runnings? Like, what, the Jamaican the Bob Sutters? Yes. You ever watched that movie? <laughs> I love that movie. There's that scene where, um, I keep forgetting his name, but he said, he looked himself in the mirror. He, t- he told his teammate, I want you to look in that mirror and tell yourself, you got pride, you got power, and ain't no mother is going to stop you from doing what you want to do. So the reason I say that um, is because and you know in every adventure in every venture um, you pursue there there's definitely externalities that will definitely be in the way um but it's about it's about now how you control those externalities impacting you and getting in your way because the only person that can get in your way is yourself nobody else so that's kind of the, the advice I'd say when it comes to like, you know, um, if you were desiring to pursue higher, more higher education or just in anything in general is don't lose that aspect of yourself that allows you to be authentic because people will know when you're not authentic um, and they will catch on to it. And you don't want that feeling or that kind of um, image around you. Um, so, and that's why I always say, pursue your dream and seize the day. Um, because even though it, t- it for you to get far, you need people around you. But for you to get those people, you have to be authentic. So um, that's kind of the only thing I would say about that. Okay, that's neat. Yeah, but yeah, I mean, aside from that, I mean, I just appreciate the offer regarding like you know you you asked me if I wanted to be a part of the podcast things like that. Also, find out that like you know we know. We know some of the same people. I feel like with you pretty much giving me my first podcast, that's definitely going to be like, you know, a noteworthy, a noteworthy thing. It's going to lead into other great things too. Those are like podcasts and like other types of forms of entertainment that I might be invited on to speak on. I know, like for me, I like to just keep it humble and like, you know, not really brag about what I do. I do, I definitely do sense that I will be somebody. That's fine. So it's just cool. Like I reminisce about where I come from, you know, how far I've come, things of that matter, and just like how much I'll be able to give back once I've gotten it all. So yeah, I got you, appreciate. man. I uh, definitely appreciate you for uh, joining on and listening to all the other episodes. And one thing I was gonna also say, I like how you said uh, being humble, uh, but I'm I, I'm also a believer in being a little bit arrogant about yourself because who else is going to brag about you apart from yourself, you know? 
but you know so that might that might be very that might be very controversial to a lot of people but <laughs> um that's just some sometimes how i feel about things is like uh, if nobody else is gonna speak up i'm gonna speak up and i'm also gonna speak up for myself a lot so you know the way i see it is called uh i, I consider it for myself it's called intellectual hum- humility to where i'm always willing to um, stand up for myself but be and be humble but also at the same time i'm always willing to learn from my mistakes all that time so um really appreciate you man for coming on um that kind of brings us to an end of this captivating episode of the city state intro to yourself podcast y'all i want to extend my heartful thanks to our incredible guest alan um and let me let y'all know man he's about to do great things i appreciate your wisdom and authenticity um and having a really truly enriched conversation and i hope that our listeners have found inspiration and value and always remember each day is an opportunity to pursue your dream and seize the day so um, before we part ways, any last words you want to say? Uh, I'm happy. I'm still uh, on to like doing as much as I can. Uh, I, you know, I enjoy how to like working hard. So I'm looking forward to what's to come. Appreciate the podcast. And I'm showing my thanks. All right, man. Thank you so much. Remember, everybody, embrace your authenticity, pursue your dream, and seize the day with purpose and passion. So until next time. Thank you all for listening. Peace out.